Railway electrification in Great Britain began during the late 19th century. A range of voltages has been used, employing both overhead lines and conductor rails. The two most common systems are 25 kV AC using overhead lines and the 750 V DC third rail system used in southeast England and on Merseyrail. In 2006, 40% 3062 miles, 4928 kilometers of the British rail network was electrified and 60% of all rail journeys were by electric traction, both by locomotives and multiple units. According to Network Rail, 64% of the electrified network uses the 25 kV AC overhead system and 36% uses the 660/750ths of a volt DC third rail rail system, the electrified network is set to expand over coming years, as 25 kV electrification is extended to currently unelectrified lines, such as the Great Western Main Line, the Midland Main Line and lines in the north of England as part of the Northern Hub. History The first electric railway in Great Britain was Volks Electric Railway in Brighton, a pleasure railway, which opened in 1883, still functioning to this day. The London Underground began operating electric services using a fourth rail system in 1890 on the City and South London Railway, now part of the London Underground Northern Line. The Liverpool Overhead Railway followed in 1893, being designed from the outset to be electric traction, unlike the City and South London Railway which was designed to be cable hauled initially. Main line electrification of some suburban lines began in the early years of the 20th century, using a variety of different systems. In 1921 a government committee chose 1,500 volts DC overhead to be the national standard, but little implementation followed and many different systems co-existed. During the interwar period, the Southern Railway adopted the 660 volts DC third rail system as its standard and greatly expanded this system across its network of lines south of London. After World War II and the nationalisation of the railways in 1948, British Railways BR expanded electrification at both 1,500 volts DC overhead and 660/750ths of a volt third rail. In 1956, BR adopted 25 kV AC overhead as standard for all projects outside logical extensions of third rail systems. The 25 kV AC network has continued to expand slowly, and large areas of the country outside London are not electrified. In 2007, the government's preferred option was to use diesel trains running on biodiesel, its white paper delivering a sustainable railway, ruling out large-scale railway electrification for the following five years. In May 2009, Network Rail launched a consultation on large-scale electrification, potentially to include the Great Western Main Line and Midland Main Line and smaller in-fill schemes. Key benefits cited were that electric trains are faster, more reliable and cause less track wear than diesel trains. Since then, electrification of the Great Western Main Line has been approved, electric trains are planned to run to Bristol from 2016 and Cardiff from 2017. Electrification of the Midland Main Line, several Trans-Pennine routes and the Welsh Valleys has also been approved but subsequently cut back considerably. In Scotland, where transport is devolved to the Scottish Government, Transport Scotland is extending electrification, for example, on the Airdrie Bathgate rail link. This is part of a larger plan that sees many major routes in central Scotland electrified, including the main Edinburgh Waverley, Glasgow Queen Street route. <laughs> Future of third rail 
In June 2011, Peter Dearman of Network Rail suggested that the third rail network will need to be converted into overhead lines. He stated, Although the top speed is 100 miles per hour, the trains cannot go over 80 miles per hour well, and 25% of power is lost from heat. Agreeing that conversion would be expensive, he said that the third rail network is at the limit of its power capability, especially as trains become more advanced in technology. The July 2012 Department for Transport High-Level Output Specification for Network Rail Control Period 5 includes the conversion of the South Western Main Line between Southampton Central and Basingstoke from 750 volts DC third rail to 25 kV AC overhead as part of a scheme to improve rail freight capacity from Southampton Port. This conversion is a pilot scheme to develop a business case for full conversion of the third rail network. The OR has also stated that on safety grounds, third rail 750 volts DC has a limited future. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Existing systems, overhead line, OL. Topic: National Rail, 25 kV, 50 Hz AC overhead. British Railways chose this as the national standard for future electrification projects outside of the third rail area in 1956. Following this, a number of lines that were originally electrified at a different voltage were converted, and a number of lines have been newly electrified with this system. Work started in the late 1950s. The first major electrification project using 25 kV was the West Coast Main Line 1959-1974. The 25 kV network has been gradually expanded ever since. Topic: <inaudible> Existing West Coast Main Line WCML Electrified from the late 1950s to the mid-1960s using the Mark I series under the BR 1955 modernization plan to crew and branches, extended to Glasgow in 1974. Northampton, see Northampton Loop Line. Birmingham New Street, see Rugby Birmingham Stafford Line. Liverpool Lime Street including newly electrified routes to Manchester via Newton Le Willows and to Wigan North Western via St Helens Central in 2015. Manchester Piccadilly, see Stafford to Manchester Line and Crewe to Manchester Line. Glasgow Central, in 1974, from Weaver Junction using Mark III A series. The Abbey Flyer. St Albans branch line was electrified 1987-88 by Network South East. Edinburgh Waverley in 1989 from Carstairs Junction in conjunction with ECML electrification. In 2003, the Crew to Kidsgrove section of the Crew to Derby line was electrified as a diversionary route for the WCML. Since 1999, the line has been modernized and the overhead line equipment has been refurbished and renewed from Mark 1, Mark 3A to UK 1 range to allow an increase line speeds from 110 miles per hour to 125 miles per hour with 140 miles per hour capability in areas previously fitted with automatically tensioned Mark 1 equipment, subject to upgrading of the balance weight arrangement to provide individually tensioned contact, catenary wires and regrading of the contact wires. At the same time sections of the line are being progressively changed to autotransformer system, London, Tilbury and Southend LTS. The majority was originally electrified at 6.25 kV, final sections converted to 25 kV in March 1989. West Anglia, Fen Line 
This covers the lines from London Liverpool Street Bethnal Green JN to Chingford, Enfield Town, Hertford East and Cambridge. In the 1960s, the lines to Chingford, Enfield Town and Cheshunt were electrified at 6.25 kV, from Cheshunt to Bishops Stortford and Hertford East at 25 kV. The Lee Valley line between Coppermill Junction and Cheshunt was electrified at 25 kV in 1969. All the 6.25 kV areas were converted to 25 kV in 1983. In 1987, electrification was extended from Bishop's Stortford to Cambridge at 25 kV. In 1990 the line to Stansted Airport opened, and in 1992 electrification was extended from Cambridge to Kings Lynn along the Fen Line. Great Eastern Main Line Gemmel. Converted from 1,500 volts DC C 1,500 volts DC section Shenfield Metro. Converted from 6.25 kV, 1,500 volts DC to a combination of AT and FT 25 kV Mark GE Great Eastern between 1976 and 1980. Presently being upgraded to the Jeff Great Eastern Fur Plus Fray range, altering the catenary from a compound to simple sagged arrangement. Romford to Upminster Line, Shenfield to Southend Line, Crouch Valley Line, Braintree Branch Line, Colchester to Clacton Line, Mayflower Line, Sunshine Coast Line. East Coast Main Line ECML electrified in two parts 1975 to 78 and 1984 to 91 the line between London King's Cross and Royston was electrified between 1976 and 1978 using the Mark 3A range as part of the Great Northern Suburban Electrification Project this included the Hertford Loop line the section between Royston and Cambridge was electrified in 1988 using the Mark III B range. In 1984, authority was given to electrify Edinburgh and Leeds. The section between Hitchin and Peterborough was completed in 1987, and Doncaster and York were reached in 1989. By 1990, electrification had reached Newcastle, and in 1991 Edinburgh. The Mark III B range was used throughout the electrification scheme. Certain areas are presently being upgraded to the Mark III D design range. This will eliminate known corrosion issues with the AWAC catenary and replace solid stainless steel droppers with flexible copper current carrying designs. Some headspan to portal conversions are also taking place. In order to keep construction teams working, two additional schemes were authorized, to Carstairs and North Berwick, North Berwick line. At the peak of the electrification project during the late 1980s, it was claimed to be the longest construction site in the world. At over 250 miles 400 km, Midland Main Line MML. Electrified between London St Pancras and Bedford in 1983 using the Mark III B range, and Dock Junction to Moorgate, now cut back to Farringdon. Electrification from Bedford to Kettering and Corby using the UK Master Series MS125 range as expected by 2019 MML Phase 1. Further extensions to Leicester, Nottingham, Trent Junction, and Sheffield via Derby by 2023 MML Phase 2 were cancelled in July 2017. However the section from Clay Cross to Sheffield will eventually be electrified by 2033 as part of HS2. London Paddington to Heathrow Airport Electrified in 1994 in a joint venture between British Rail and the British Airports Authority using the Mark III B series. Using part of the Great Western Main Line. High Speed 1 newest main line, completed in 2007. 
Links London St Pancras with Kent and the Channel Tunnel. London local Lines local lines within London to be electrified with 25 kV are North London line between Acton Central and Stratford. Lee Valley lines. Various other suburban lines in the north of the city are electrified as part of other routes mentioned above. Gospel Oak to Barking Line Edinburgh. In 1991, the ECML to Edinburgh was electrified. A few local routes were also electrified. Edinburgh Crossrail, Edinburgh Waverley to Newcraghall. The service is by DMUs, pending reopening of part of the Waverley line. North Berwick Line, Edinburgh Waverley to North Berwick Glasgow to Edinburgh via Carstairs Line, some North Berwick Line trains continue to Glasgow Central. Intercity trains from the ECML continue to Glasgow Central. Central Scotland The route from Edinburgh to Glasgow via Bathgate has been reinstated between Bathgate and Airdrie and electrified throughout. It opened on of December 2010. Approval has also been given by the Scottish Parliament for electrification of the main intercity route between Edinburgh and Glasgow Queen Street High Level via Falkirk. The project, known as EGIP, was scheduled to encompass infill electrification in the Glasgow area and Greenhill Junction to Stirling, Dunblane and recently reopened Aloha, which mainly carry commuter services, but these were removed in 2012 as part of a cost review. Glasgow Suburban Suburban electrification was begun during the 1960s in the wake of the BR 1955 modernization plan. Electrification was piecemeal and is still incomplete, with several suburban, rural and intercity lines still unelectrified. The Glasgow Suburban Railway Network can be divided into three main areas. North Clyde Line, also known as the Glasgow North Electric Suburban Line", one of the first lines in Glasgow electrified in 1960 Hellingsburg Central, Balloch and Milngavy to Glasgow Queen Street low level and to Springburn and Airdrie. South Clyde, the Cathcart Circle Line Glasgow Central to Newton and Neilston was electrified on the 22nd of May 1962. The Inverclyde line, Glasgow Central to Gorock and Weems Bay, was electrified in 1967. The Ayrshire Coast line, Glasgow Central to Ayr, Largs and Ardrossan Harbour, was electrified in 1986-1987. The Paisley Canal line was electrified to Corkerhill from Glasgow Central in late 2012, extended to Paisley. Argyle Line, between Dalmere and Milngavy via Glasgow Central low level to Hamilton Circle, Larkhall, Lanark and Carstairs via Hamilton, Motherwell or Holytown. There is also peak service to Coatbridge Central. On the Glasgow to Edinburgh via Carstairs Line, some North Berwick Line trains continue to Glasgow Central. A single daily East Coast intercity train from the ECML continues to and from Glasgow Central. On the Schatz Line, Holytown Junction to Kirknewton is not electrified, but both ends are, shared with the WCML, Argyle Line and ECML. The remaining section is to be electrified in mid-2019. The Cumbernauld Line to Springburn and the remaining section of the Motherwell to Cumbernauld Line was electrified in mid-2014. The line between Springburn and Glasgow Queen Street high level has not yet been completed. Until Glasgow Queen Street high level has been electrified, electric Cumbernauld Line trains reverse at Springburn and run through Glasgow Queen Street low-level station. The Wifflet line between Wifflet and Rutherglen via Carmyle was electrified in late 2014. Leeds area In 1994, a project to electrify some of the local lines around Leeds was given authority to proceed. The project was called the Leeds North West Electrification, which electrified Airedale line to Skipton and Bradford Forster Square. 
Warfidel Line to Ilkley Wakefield Line electrified in 1989 as part of the East Coast Main Line electrification to London King's Cross Harrogate Line – Proposed, Business Case Submitted Manchester Area Manchester to Glossop, Hadfield converted from the truncated 1,500 volts DC Manchester Sheffield Wath Electric Railway. Manchester to Liverpool via Earlstown Line, electrified in 2015 as part of the Northern Hub project. Manchester, South Junction and Altrincham Railway part was converted to Manchester Metrolink. Style Line, including branch to Manchester Airport. Stafford to Manchester Line, branch of the WCML, electrified in the wake of the BR 1955 modernisation plan Crew to Manchester Line, branch of the WCML, electrified in the wake of the 1955 modernisation plan West Midlands West Coast Main Line routes electrified in the 1960s Trent Valley Line Stone to Colwick Line Rugby Birmingham Stafford Line Stafford to Manchester Line Walsall to Wolverhampton Line Commuter Lines out of Birmingham New Street Cross City Line, electrified 1993 Chase Line, New Street to Walsall electrified 1966 2010s Network Rail Electrification Program In 2009, Lord Adonis was appointed Secretary of State for Transport. After a gap of more than a decade, electrification was back on the agenda and Adonis announced plans to electrify the Great Western Main Line from London as far as Swansea, as well as infill electrification schemes in the north west of England. In July 2012 the UK government announced £4.2 billion of new electrification schemes, all at 25 kV AC and reconfirmed schemes previously announced by Adonis. These were to be Northern Hub, Great Western Main Line, South Wales Main Line, Midland Main Line, Electric Spine, Crossrail, Gospel Oak to Barking Line and West Midlands Suburban Lines. Rail transport in Scotland is a devolved matter for the Scottish Government but they too have pursued electrification with multiple schemes in the central belt. All these have been 25 kV AC also as in England and Wales. Electrification has not been without controversy with cancellations and various appearances of the Secretary of State for Transport called before the Transport Select Committee. The projects have been subject to cost overruns and delays, and on 8 November 2016 the government announced that several elements of the Great Western Main Line electrification program would be indefinitely deferred. Other systems one thousand five hundred volts DC overhead. Tyne and Weir Metro, the Tyne and Weir Metro, which opened in 1980, is now the only system left in the UK using the one thousand five hundred volts DC overhead lines. Although it is often described as light rail, it is closer to a heavy metro, using only segregated track. Much of its route follows that of the previous Tyneside Electrics, which had been converted to diesel by 1967. Since 2002, the Metro has shared main line track on the Durham Coast Line to Sunderland. This presents a potential problem for main line services if routes into Sunderland or Newcastle upon Tyne that use this section were to be electrified at 25 kV AC. Historically, there were more lines electrified at 1,500 volts DC, but these have all since been either converted to 25 kV AC or closed. See 1,500 volts DC overhead historic. 
Topic: 750 volts DC overhead. Used on several tram systems. Edinburgh Trams. Manchester Metrolink. Sheffield Supertram. Croydon Tramlink. Nottingham Express Transit. Midland Metro. Topic: Other overhead systems. Blackpool Tramway, originally 550 volts DC, in 2011 upgraded to 600 volts to operate more modern rolling stock. The National Tramway Museum at Kreich, Derbyshire uses 550 volts DC. This voltage was chosen for maximum compatibility with its historic fleet of trams as well as more modern units. The Wirral Tramway uses 550 volts DC. The Seaton Tramway uses 120 volts DC. Topic: <laughs> Existing systems, third and fourth rails. Topic: National Rail, 650 volts to 750 volts DC. Third Rail, Top Contact, Southern Electric. The extensive Southern Third Rail electric network covers South London and the southern counties of Dorset, Hampshire, Sussex, Surrey, and Kent. The London and South Western Railway (LNSWR) third rail system at 660 volts DC began before World War I from Waterloo to suburban destinations. The Southern Railway was formed in the 1923 grouping. It adopted the LNSWR system, and by 1929, the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway (LBNSCR) suburban overhead network was replaced by Third Rail. The South Eastern Main Line was electrified at 600 volts, later upgraded to 750 volts DC. The third rail extended throughout most South London lines out of all its London termini. Throughout the 1930s, there was much main line electrification, including the Brighton Main Line including East, West Coastways and related routes in 1932–1933, the Portsmouth Direct Line the 4th of July 1937 and to Maidstone and Gillingham 1939. After World War II, electrification was soon resumed in the newly nationalised British Railways Southern Region. The BR 1955 modernisation plan included the two-stage Kent Coast electrification. The Chatham Main Line was completed, followed by the South Eastern Main Line and related lines. The voltage was raised from 660 volts to 750 V. Since then, all electrification has used 750 volts. Lines electrified before then remain at 660 V. Attention then switched to the neglected former LNSWR area, then the South Western Division. The South Western Main Line SWML to Southampton Central and Bournemouth was electrified in 1967 and to Weymouth in 1988. During sectorization in the 1980s, Network Southeast conducted extensive infill electrification. The Snow Hill Tunnel was reopened, enabling Thameslink. The Hastings Line, Eastleigh to Ferrum Line and the Oxted Line East Grinstead branch were electrified. This left only a few lines unelectrified, the West of England Main Line, the Wessex Main Line, the North Downs Line, the Oxted Line Uckfield branch, and the Marshlink Line. Merseyrail Two lines of the Merseyrail network, the Northern Line and the Wirral Line use 750 volts DC third rail see suburban electrification of the London, Midland and Scottish Railway for its history. London and North Western Railway LNWR Euston and Broad Street to Watford Junction and Croxley Green Watford DC Line Richmond, North Woolwich North London Line see Suburban Electrification of the London, Midland and Scottish Railway for its history
In 1970, the North London DC lines and the Class 501 emus used on these services were converted for third rail operation, with the fourth rail generally being removed on sections not used by Lowell. Some fourth rail was retained in the Gunnersbury and Queen's Park areas for emergency use by Lowell. With the closure of Broad Street, the North London line was joined with the Stratford to North Woolwich line. This was electrified with third rail and overhead line as far as Stratford, third rail to North Woolwich. Two branches of the Watford DC line have been closed to Rickmansworth in 1952, to passengers, to goods in 1967, and to Croxley Green in 1996. The Watford DC line between Queen's Park and Harrow and Wealdstone and the North London line between Richmond and Gunnersbury are used by London overground trains designed for 750 volts third rail and Backerloo line trains designed for 630 volts third and fourth rail. As a compromise, the nominal line voltage is 650 volts, and since 1970 the centre rail has been bonded to the return running rail. There are no special provisions required at Queen's Park, where the two dissimilar systems meet, just a gap longer than one coach of a Backerloo line train at the entry to and exit from the Backerloo, which operates with a nominal minus 210 volts on the fourth rail and plus 420V on the third rail. There is no bridging of the incompatible systems as trains pass from one to the other since, like all UK electric trains intended to run extensively in tunnels, there is no continuity of traction power circuits between vehicles of the train. A similar arrangement applies between Putney Bridge and Wimbledon, where the district line runs over tracks owned by Network Rail, which also used by South West trains, though normally only for stock movements. Northern City Line The Northern City Line connects the East Coast Main Line to Moorgate. It was isolated by the abandonment of the 1930s New Works program and the development of the Metropolitan Green Belt. Tube services were truncated at its northern end by the Victoria Line in 1964 at Drayton Park. The remainder was handed over to BR in 1975 in conjunction with the suburban electrification of the East Coast Main Line. The line uses third rail DC electrification between Moorgate and Drayton Park, where trains switch to 25 kV AC overhead. Topic. 630 volts DC third rail top contact Island line Isle of Wight The single remaining national rail line on the Isle of Wight was electrified in 1967 so that former London underground rolling stock could be used due to the limited height of ride tunnel the Island Line used 630 volts DC third rail, as it was a cheaper option to convert the Lull stock into third rail, and implement third rail only on the line. The rolling stock currently used is BR Class 483s. Topic 630 volts DC fourth rail top contact London Underground LU The London Underground is a large metro system operating across London and beyond, commonly known as the Tube. Its 408 kilometer (254 miles) is made up of 11 lines. Electrification began during the 1890s. It was largely unified between 1900 and 1910 and nationalised in 1933, becoming the railway component of London Transport LT. A major expansion programme the New Works was launched, in which LT took over several urban branches of mainline railways. The underground is mostly in North London. Its expansion into South London was limited by geology unfavourable to tunnelling and by the extensive main line network, much of which was being electrified. See Southern Electric. The underground uses a relatively uncommon four rail system of electrification. 
Two standard gauge rails are the running rails, the outer third rail carries positive current at plus 420 VDC and the inner fourth rail is the negative return at minus 210 volts DC, giving a supply voltage of 630 volts DC. The chief advantage of the fourth rail system is that, in tunnels with a metallic usually cast iron lining, the return traction current does not leak into the lining causing electrolytic corrosion there or in the neighboring utility mains. The two running rails are available exclusively for track circuits. The surface sections use the fourth rail solely for operational consistency. The system shares track with network rail in several places. Where the track is shared with 750 volts third rail stock, the central rail is bonded to the running rails and the outside rail electrified at 660 V. This allows both types of train to operate satisfactorily. The suburban network of the London and North Western Railway LNWR was electrified in cooperation with the underground, but during the 1970s British Rail introduced third rail emus and the sections of the LNWR suburban network not used by the underground had the fourth rail removed see London and North Western Railway, above. The underground has carried out studies to consider raising the voltage above the present 630 volts nominal. New equipment at their substations does allow for a future increase to a standard 750 volts nominal. In addition, the electrical equipment of new trains are also based on the use of 750 volts rated equipment. So, whilst new equipment is being designed to for 750 volts operation, no decision to increase the voltage has yet been made public by the underground. Topic: 750 volts DC third rail bottom contact. Docklands Light Railway (DLR). This uses bottom contact composite third rail, with an aluminium body and a steel contact surface. The advantage of this is a low resistance, high current capacity rail with a durable steel surface for current collection. The rail may be surrounded by insulating material on the top and sides to reduce the risk of electrocution to railway staff and trespassers. The bottom contact system is less prone to derangement by snow than top contact. Topic: 600 volts DC third rail top contact. Glasgow subway electrified in 1935. Topic. 250 volts DC third rail top contact Hythe Pier Railway electrified in 1922 Topic 110 volts DC third rail top contact Volks Electric Railway was originally electrified at 50 volts DC, raised to 160 volts in 1884 and reduced to 110 volts DC during the 1980s. 100 volts DC, 4 rail The elevated monorail at the National Motor Museum, Beaulieu uses rubber tires running on two metal tracks, one on either side of the central guide. Because it is rubber tired, it requires two current conductors and two collectors, hence the four rail designation. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Obsolete systems. Great Britain has used different electrification systems in the past. Many of these date from the early part of the 20th century, when traction electricity was in the experimental stage. This section describes each system, in order of decreasing voltage. 
Topic: 6600 volts, 25 hertz AC overhead. Lancaster to Haysham via Morecambe, used for an early trial of electrification, opened between 13 April and 14 September 1908, and operated until 1953. Elevated Electric London Suburban Lines of the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway, the first large-scale suburban electrification scheme, starting with the South London Line and then extended to other commuter lines around the south of London, operational from 1 December 1909. Following the grouping into the LBSCR into the Southern Railway in 1922, all of the 6,600 volts lines were converted to the 650 volts DC third rail system by September 1929. Topic: 6,250 volts 50 hertz AC overhead. During the initial electrification of parts of the network to 25 kV 50 Hz AC overhead, the initial solution to the limited clearance problems in suburban areas due to numerous tunnels and bridges in London and Glasgow was to use the lower voltage of 6.25 kV. Later technological improvements in insulation allowed these areas to be converted to 25 kV. The last sections of 6.25 kV were converted during the 1980s. London, Tilbury and Southend lines The 6.25 kV section was from Fenchurch Street to beyond Barking, with changeovers there on both the Upminster and Tilbury lines. The section between Chalkwell and Shuberiness was also at 6.25 kV. The remainder was at 25 kV. The sections electrified at 6.25 kV were converted to 25 kV during the early 1980s. Great Eastern Lines The line from Liverpool Street to Southend Victoria was originally electrified at 1,500 V DC overhead during the 1940s to 50s. During the early 1960s, the whole of this line was converted to 6.25 kV AC overhead, while the main line east of Shenfield was progressively electrified at 25 kV, with changeover east of Shenfield. During the early 1980s, the line was again converted, this time to 25 kV. The Cambridge line and branches from Liverpool Street was electrified in the early 1960s, with 6.25 kV out to a changeover at Cheshunt, and 25 kV beyond. The Chingford and Enfield lines were thus at 6.25 kV throughout. This route was again fully converted to 25 kV in the early 1980s. As part of the electrification onwards to Cambridge and Norwich in the 1980s, electric locomotives were transferred to these routes from the West Coast route. These locomotives would not have been able to operate at 6.25 kV. Glasgow Suburban Network on the North Clyde, the central section between Parkhead and before Dalmere Clydebank Loop and Westerton Anniesland Loop were at 6.25 kV, with the outer sections at 25 kV. The Bridgeton and Springburn branches were thus at 6.25 kV throughout. The sections electrified at 6.25 kV were converted to 25 kV during the early 1980s. On the South Clyde, the route from Glasgow Central around the Cathcart Loop was initially at 6.25 kV, with changeovers to 25 kV at Kings Park and Morend on the Motherwell and Neilston routes. These lines were progressively converted to 25 kV in the 1970s to 80s. Topic: 3500 volts DC overhead. 
Barry to Holcombe Brook. This was electrified by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway in 1913 as part of a trial system for export. The system was converted to third rail in 1918. See below. Topic: 1500 volts DC overhead historic. After World War I, the UK government set up a committee to investigate the various systems of railway electrification. In 1921, it recommended that 1,500 volts DC overhead should be the future national standard. Several schemes were implemented in its wake, but the Great Depression and World War II meant that very little work was done. Technological advances after 1945 meant that the 25 kV AC system was adopted instead for the West Coast Main Line and Glasgow Suburban Electrification as set out in the BR 1955 Modernisation Plan. However, at the same time, large amounts of money had been and were still being spent converting several lines to 1,500 volts DC. Manchester, South Junction and Altrincham Railway A joint LMS and LNER scheme, it opened on the 11th of May 1931. The success of this scheme influenced LNER's later electrification schemes. The line was converted to 25 kV AC in 1971, but the stretch between Altrincham and Trafford Bar plus the stretch between Trafford Bar and the Cornbrook Viaduct were later incorporated into Manchester Metrolink and converted again this time to 750 V DC. Manchester, Sheffield, Wath Known as the Woodhead Route, the LNER chose this hilly and busy main line for its first mainline electrification, with work beginning in 1936. Due to the Depression and World War II, it was not completed until the 1950s. After completion, the government chose to standardize on 25 kV AC instead, leaving the Woodhead route and the few other 1,500 V DC lines isolated and non-standard. The passenger locomotives were sold in 1969 and saw further service in the Netherlands. In a subsequent rationalization, BR closed much of this route east of Hadfield in 1981 in favor of the more southerly Hope Valley Line, which serves more local communities. A section of the line between Manchester, Glossop and Hadfield remained open as part of the Manchester Suburban Network, and was operated by Class 506 MUs, until it was converted to 25 kV AC in December 1984. Shenfield Metro The LNER decided to electrify the Liverpool Street to Shenfield section of the Great Eastern Main Line Gemmel, known as the Shenfield Metro. Civil engineering works began during the 1930s, but World War II intervened. Work was completed in 1949 and extended to Kelmsford and Southend Victoria in 1956, using Class 306 EMUs. It was converted on 4–6 November 1960, in the wake of the BR 1955 modernization plan, to the new standard of 25 kV AC initially with some sections at 6.25 kV. The rest of the Gemmel was subsequently electrified. Shildon to Newport This line ran from Shildon County Durham to Newport near Middlesbrough. The route was initially over the 1825 Stockton to Darlington line, then via Simpasture Junction the former Clarence Railway through Carlton, Carlton Junction to Carlton South Junction, Bowesfield West Junction to Bowesfield Junction, through Thornaby and ending at Aramis Yard Newport East. In the wake of the electrification of Tyneside by the NER, this coal-carrying line was electrified between 1 July 1915 and 1 January 1916 as a planned precursor to electrifying NER's busy York to Newcastle Main Line part of the East Coast Main Line. 
The LNER removed this electrification system in 1935 between the 7th of January and the 8th of July. The decline in the coal market making it economically unfeasible to undertake the significant renewals required to continue electric operation. The locomotives were stored for other electrified routes. Topic: 1200 volts DC third rail side contact. Manchester, Victoria, Barry. In 1916, the line between Manchester Victoria and Barrie was electrified using 1,200 volts DC third rail side contact. The line between Barrie and Holcombe Brook which had been electrified using 3,500 volts DC overhead in 1913 was converted to this system in 1918. It was abandoned in 1991, when the line was converted to a 750 volts DC system and became part of the Manchester Metrolink. Topic: 650 volts DC overhead. Swansea and Mumbles Railway. Topic. 600 volts DC third rail Tyneside Electrics This was electrified in 1904 in response to extensive competition from new electric trams The concept was a success for the North Eastern Railway NER a noted pioneer in electrification as passenger numbers returned to pre-tram levels as the stock reached life expectancy in 1937, the network was remodeled by London and North Eastern Railway (LNER) to reflect the changing industrial and residential makeup of the area. Electrified at the same time was the Dockside branch, where a pair of Class E S1, formerly NER Number no. One and Two, locomotives were introduced in 1905. These British Thomson Houston locomotives operated from both the third rail and overhead line. British Railways removed the electrification between 1963 and 1967, citing the changing industrial and population makeup of the area, which reduced the need for electric traction. Much of the Tyneside network was later re-electrified using 1,500 volts DC overhead as the Tyne and Weir Metro. Topic: 525 volts DC third rail. Liverpool Overhead Railway. The Liverpool Overhead Railway was one of the earliest electric railways in Great Britain. The first section, between Alexandra Dock and Herculaneum Dock, was opened in 1893. The line connected with Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway's North Mersey branch. It was never nationalised, and closed on 30 December 1956 due to extensive corrosion throughout its iron infrastructure, which was deemed uneconomical to replace. <laughs> 500 volts DC, overhead Grimsby and Immingham Railway Topic: 500 volts DC third rail. City and South London Railway. The City and South London Railway electrification was unusual compared with later schemes in that it used a three-wire DC system. This meant that although the offset centre third rail was electrified at plus 500 volts in the northbound tunnel, it was electrified at minus 500 volts in the southbound tunnel. The motors on the locomotives and the incandescent electric lamps in the carriages worked, regardless of the polarity of the supply. The three-wire system was adopted because the initial system was fed directly from the dynamos in the surface power plant at the Stockwell end of the line. 
it was important to minimize the voltage drop as much as possible, bearing in mind the rather steep gradient on the approach to King William Street Station. Topic: 400 40 volts DC third rail. Post Office Railway Underground Railway under London operated by the Post Office. Operated between 1927 and closure in 2003. See also British electric multiple units List of British electric locomotives Proposed railway electrification in Great Britain Rail transport in Great Britain <laughs>